Hello there and welcome to the show. I do hope Maureen has forgiven me for being a little bit late with her birthday singing last uh, uh, on the last show. Do, I, I haven't heard from you yet, Maureen. Have I been forgiven, dear? Please forgive, please forgive me, let me go. Oh, no, that's the wrong words, that one, isn't it? Yes. Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to sing on this show. I've decided not to sing. Funny thing is, I was uh, having a look um, look back on the video to the last show. And uh, I, I cannot lie to you. I do not know the words to I Will Survive. In fact, I know the, the words to very few songs. I know the choruses. You know, sometimes you go to these karaoke nights and people, they kind of muddle their th way through the verse. And then when it comes to the chorus, they sing really loud. There are a few songs in particular that are like that. For example, Oasis, Don't Look Back in Anger. The, the chorus, they start screaming their heads off. And the rest of it is <laughs> a little bit like that, really. Well, I don't know the words to I Will Survive. So actually, they are kind of to the left to me on a computer monitor. So although I was singing, I, I thought if I put the computer monitor in roughly the same position as the camera, you wouldn't see me looking over. But you do actually, don't you? <laughs> I kind of you could see me kind of going, glancing towards the left now and again like that. Huh? Did you notice that? Those of you that watch. Welcome along. My name's Chris Reardon. This is United Kingdom Talk, our three times a week talk show. There's an email address if you'd like to join in at any time. It's Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, I had a bit of a chest last time. This appears to have gone and has left me with a rather deep, sexy voice. Oh, yeah. Hi. My name's Chris. Fly me. <laughs> Did you quite like the uh, the deep, sexy voice? And talking about flying... Oh, Blimey now, I've left the thing. Just a minute, let me get me bits of paper. I've left my... Where are they now? One minute. I left them on the printer. I just printed these off. Because a news article I found the other day, and you are going to love this if you've got pets. Okay? Now, I've never had to do this, but have you ever taken a pet on holiday with you or, I don't know, away with you somewhere? By aeroplane? Have you ever heard of pet airways? I'm quite serious. This is not an April Fool's joke. Pet airways. Now, when I first looked at this, uh, I was kind of talking to myself up here in the Mirable Studios, and I suddenly heard my cat, Katie, meowing away downstairs because she listens. To, you know, you have to be very careful what you say. Oh, they don't miss a thing, cats. You never know whether they're watching you or whatever. Yes. Well, anyway, because I could hear her meowing. When I said pet airways, it immediately got her attention. She thought she was going to go on holiday. She did. But she's not, she's not actually going anywhere. I never think it's a good idea to take your pets on holiday because, you know, it's not, it's not really, is it? Because they don't know the area and they could get lost. I couldn't bear the thought of losing my little cat. Anyway, the story goes um, uh, about pet airways. We always knew Zoe and Jack. I'm reading this from the website they have. Uh, we always knew Zoe and Jack Russell Terrier. Oh, hope she didn't hear that. Oh, she goes mad if I mention a dog. She knows all the breeds, dear. And she can't. My cat, in particular, can't stand those horrible little Pekingese things. That yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, aren't they awful? Oh, they're awful, those Pekingese things. There was a man last night, I was working in uh, Birmingham last night, which was a tiny bit better. It was a tiny bit better because I've told you I work uh, now on Friday nights at a place called Route 2 in Birmingham. And it, it's, I, I won't lie, it's hard going. This place has been left to rot for years. And now they've got a new manager in, Lee who's come from London, who I know, and he took me up there with him uh, to do a night on Fridays. Um, but it's, it, it's hard going. It's really hard going getting customers in there. The problem is there are a lot of pubs and bars and clubs in the area, all within a walking distance of each other, and they are all competing, and it's very, very difficult. 
to be honest, the only uh, my friend goes up there as well. His name's Adam, also known as DJ Demon. And for some reason, he gets everyone around. Everyone fancies Demon, and I don't understand it. I used to have that. There used to be lines and lines of people hoping to be noticed by me standing against the walls of clubs and pubs. Now there's no one. What's all that about? And I look at Demon. He's all right. He's a good friend of mine. But I just can't see it. Why does everyone fancy Demon? I don't understand. Please, will someone write in and tell... Do have, have any, have, have any of Demon's fans... Watch or listen to this show. What is it about Demon that you fancy? I can't see it, dear. No, I'm not jealous that I don't have that anymore. <laughs> anyway, so Demon goes up there twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. And I go up there Fridays. And uh, he has the busiest night, which is Monday. Now, Monday is a is a strange night to be busy, but... They have really cheap drinks on a Monday. I th I don't know if it's a pound a drink or one pound fifty a drink. One of the two. Um, so clearly, that is the only thing that's bringing people in there. You know, the cheap drinks, and of course the fact that Pretty Boy Demon is doing the <laughs> DJing as well. Apparently, he has so many people in his DJ box when he's working. It's unbelievable. It's shocking. Shocking. Why haven't I got people like this? Mind you, I don't want to... He's, he's, he likes the very young ones, you know, 20, 19, 18, 19, 20. I can't be doing with that. I want someone about 32. Then again, how many DJ boxes do you see with people around the age of 32 hanging around them hoping to be noticed? It doesn't happen because they've all got someone and I haven't. Ah! <laughs> Can we go back to this story, please? Oh, how did I get onto that? Oh, yeah. And last night... I popped outside because uh, usually a group of people gather outside the front door while they're smoking cigarettes uh, because they're not allowed to smoke in any pars or clubs in the UK now, which is great. Fantastic. Two years now since we stopped doing that. Two years. And my chest has never felt better. I'm just having a little feel in my chest now. It is quite nice. I'm very firm today. I'm feeling firm. Are you feeling firm? Go and have a little touch. Don't be shy. Come on, girls. Have a little touch of your chest. Is it feeling nice and firm? Yes, I'm feeling very firm today. Um, and there was this bloke walked past with two lovely little terriers. Little Scottish terriers. They look like little old men on leg on four legs, don't they? Don't you think? Scottish terriers. <laughs> anyway, uh, the story goes, we always knew Zoe, uh, Russell Terrier, uh, uh, Jack Russell Terrier was... Oh, what's that say? Oh, was smart, but it wasn't until a couple of years ago that we realised she's also a brilliant entrepreneur. After all, it was Zoe who gave us the idea for Pet Airways. With Zoe as part of our family, planning vacations was always a little more complicated. Visiting out-of-state friends or relatives required sophisticated logistics. I've never quite understand what logistics are. What are they? Do you know? What are logistics? You see, you often see these vans tearing up and down the uh, British motorways with a big sign on logistics. What is that? Another one of the mysteries of life. Weekend getaways always had to be close to home. It wasn't Zoe's fault, of course. It was the airlines. There was simply no safe way for Zoe for com to comfortably fly with us. She's not a big dog, just a little one, but a little too big to fit under the seat. Is that what you have to do to pets? Put them under the seat? Oh, my Katie won't be having any of that, I'm afraid, my dear. That's why I don't take her on planes. You can't put your pet under a seat, can you? What's wrong with these airlines? Do you do that at home? Huh? Are you sitting there in front of the telly and you shove your pet out of the way under a seat? I think that's dreadful, dear. Dread there should be laws against this sort of thing. I mean, it's siding on racism, if you ask me. Racism against pets and it shouldn't be allowed. Poor things. We need to get someone involved, someone big involved with this. Um, uh, someone, uh, let me think. Who, who's that? Um, who's that? Kofi Annan or whatever his name is. No, no, Obama would be good at that. Surely, oh, but president, your president Obama, he's got a few pets, hasn't he? 
What's he got? Dogs? I don't know what he's... Has, has Obama got any pets? Or maybe he's got unusual pets, like a parrot or a mouse. Does he, does he have a little hamster cage in the White House? Oh, you can see that. little hamster cage in the White House on a shelf there for when he's bored. You know, when, when he's sitting there doing his... Pay, oh, I'm bored now. I'm going to play with a hamster. Do you Obama does that? Maybe he keeps the hamster in his pocket. Like that. What's that mouse film? Oh, what is that mouse film? I can't remember now. There's, there were two of them, wasn't there? Small, little, 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 little something. Sid Little, Sid Little, Ken Little, Chicken Little, no. Oh, oh my word. Oh, how annoying. It's a little mouse. Something little, and I can't remember what it was called. But I, I reckon, yes, Obama's probably got a pet like that, a mouse or something like that. Do you know what? I've just looked straight into, there's a bright light right in front of me, for those of you watching on YouTube. Oh, yes, we've got lighting as well now, dear. It just gets better and better, doesn't it? And I just accidentally looked straight at it, and now I've got a black dot in my eye, and I can't see directly in front of me. <laughs> anyway, back to this. Of course, there's one thing Zoe is certainly not, and that is cargo. As we're fond of telling our neighbour Janet, her boxer Samson isn't Samsonite, and she agreed. She's got a boxer dog, obviously. In fact, we met lots of neighbours, friends, and even complete strangers who felt exactly the same way. Their pets are not cargo. So we got to thinking, maybe Zoe was trying to tell us something. Maybe there was a travel solution that would suit her perfectly and everyone else out there too. Instead of trying to convince the human airlines to treat pets better, why not start up an airline just for pets? Meow! Woof! Woof! Bear! I suppose you'd have to book two seats for a sheep, would you? Because they're quite big, aren't they? Although to make them smaller, you could shave them first. Take off all their wool. I wouldn't perhaps it'll only fit in one seat then. I don't know. Whenever we tell people about pet airways, the response is so overwhelmingly positive. We're still amazed we were the first to make it happen. You see, on pet airways, your pets aren't packages. They're passengers. Aha! Passengers! I love it! Passengers! Do you get it? Oh dear. Oh, come on, keep up, for God's sake, will ya? Keep up. Every step of the journey, we'll take care of them as if they were our own, because that's exactly the way we want Zoe to be treated. Bon voyage, Dan and Elisa, who run pet airlines. I love this story, who actually run pet airlines. Now, um, there's some, some more bits here I printed off. Now, the Pet Airways Promise. I mean, I should, this programme should be sponsored by Pet Airways. I'll tell you that now. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, did you hear that? There was a rattle then, wasn't there? <coughs> oh, that's better. It's not. It's OK. It's not getting any worse. I promise you it's not getting any worse. The Pet Airways Promise. We promise to transport your pet with lots of love, care, safety and comfort in the main cabin. Pet Airways is the first airline exclusively dedicated to pets. No humans, please. And we take the job of providing a comfortable experience for pets. Sorry, I mustn't laugh. Very seriously. We'll do everything in our power to make sure your pets get the best care during the journey because we're committed to taking care of our pet porcingers as if they were our own. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? So what can you expect for your dollars? Now, I say dollars because it appears <coughs> that this is only available in the US. OK. Now, I thought I printed off some prices, but they don't seem to have. Um... Oh, I have printed off some prices. 
Okay, I'll read you the prices in a minute. So this is what you can expect. Number one, you drop your pet off at our pet lounge. It says, located at the airport, you must check in your pet no later than two hours before we take off. Uh, so it's similar to, to, a, to a normal airline, really, isn't it? If you choose, you may check in your pet up to 72 hours before the flight. We'll be happy to board your pet at our pause lounge until the flight. They've even got their own blooming lounge here. And it good. Potty breaks are very important to your pet. With the human airlines, your pet could be made to hold themselves for a very long time. Pet Airways monitors the last time your pet had a potty break and make sure that they get regular potty breaks along the way. This means that it may take us longer to get where we're going, but the care of our passengers is our first priority. They love animals, these people, didn't they? Pets board the plane, number three, and our pet attendants make sure they're comfortable and that they are and their pet carrier are secure. Number four, a pet attendant monitors and checks the comfort of all passengers every 15 minutes during the flight. After landing, pets will be disembarked, given a potty break and will be available for pickup at the pet lounge. Oh, this is, this is so fabulous. I love it. Number five, pick up your pet at the pet lounge at the destination, knowing he or she has travelled comfortably and safely in the main cabin of our plane. If you cannot pick up your pet that day, we will be happy to board your pet overnight at the Paws Lounge. So there we are. I mean, this is fantastic. This is really good. And they also say, each time pets move anywhere, we track and record their progress, which means you can monitor your pet's journey every step of the way online at Pet Airways Pet Tracker. Our Pet Airways promise is that your pet will never be left alone. A pet attendant will always be within a cat's meow. <laughs> Very good marketing, I have to say. The, the, the whole way... Um, that this thing is written is is very tempting, uh, as you can see. So how much, how much is all this? Now that's the question. As I say, um, this only appears to be um, within the US. So I don't know what um, fares are like for humans flying within the US. But here are the sort of prices you can expect. Now, this is for pets only, OK? Uh, for Chicago to Los Angeles will cost you $199 each way. OK, that's not return. That's each way. Um, so hang on, I've got something on my microphone there. A little bit of dust or something. I just I can't stand a bit, a bit of dust on the microphone. Uh, Los Angeles to New York is $299 each way and New York to Chicago is $199 each way all right so I, I really don't know how that compares to say uh, you yourself jumping on a plane between Chicago and Los Angeles or one of those but I'd be very interested to know so one for our uh, American viewers and listeners there is that sort of a reasonable price to pay New York to Chicago, $199 one way just for your pets. Would that be a good price? Do let us know on that because I don't know. You see, I'm not over there. Uh, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, Pet Airways. Oh, and the website is... <clears throat> excuse me, uh, petairways.com. Have a little look there, petairways.com. Good idea, isn't it? I wonder, I, wonder if they trans I wonder if they transport goldfish or tropical fish or anything like that. How would you transport those, I suppose? I bet they would. Would they? Or parrots? <laughs> I think it's a brilliant idea, and I can't understand why no one's ever thought of that before. This is this is where the money's made, isn't it, eh? When people come up with ideas, 
and it's so simple that you, you, you would have thought someone had come up with that before. Have you ever, you know, come across like a new product or idea or something like that? And you sit there and you think to yourself, why hasn't anyone thought of this before? You ever do that? Maybe you've got some ideas yourself and you don't know how to swing them into action. I wonder who helps you. Onward then. Um, oh, a couple of Sundays ago. I was very excited. We had four birthdays at the pub I work at on Sunday nights in Clapham. I work there Thursdays and Sundays, the two brewers, that's called. Uh, that is a basically uh, uh, mainly a drag uh, venue where they have uh, shows on. Quite a nice place. And um, it's somewhere where you could possibly come down to. OK, I would never mention anywhere that I didn't think that you would be comfortable at this place is all right actually the two brewers in clapham actually come to think of it all the places i work at at the moment there's nothing not a single one of them i don't think i'd like someone to come down to to be honest this is a mainly a drag venue so they have it it's not a great big place but it's big enough holds about 500 uh sort of 250 there's two parts to it there's a club part and there's a cabaret part. Now, the club part is only open on Fridays and Saturdays and occasionally Sundays if it's a bank holiday or if they have a special do on. Usually it's just the front bar that's open and we have cabaret there on a Sunday. Well, uh, last Sunday, it was four people's birthdays. And I was very, very excited about this, not because it's their birthdays, but because I was expecting a lovely, great big birthday cake, which is usually shared among everyone who's kind of up on the stage, which includes me. So <clears throat> we had this this big birthday thing, one after the other, all four of them, singing happy birthday throughout the night. And then about halfway through the night, this cake came out. Beautiful looking cake. It was all white icing. Had those little silver, uh, like, what are those little silver balls? All of it, you know, little one, like, like a bit like small ball bearings. You know the ones, don't you? All around the edge of the cake. And little men made out of um, icing or marzipan or whatever, sitting all around the cake. And it was on two tiers. I mean, it was a bit like a wedding cake. It's probably because it was so many people's birthday. Anyway, so they're singing happy birthday now and it's cake. And uh, it was a, <clears throat> I thought it was a bit dangerous, actually, because uh, the guy who, who made it, Paul Flowers is his name. Very, very artistic man. Very, very clever. Um, he, he, I mean, you know, if I, if I asked him to come in and do the studio, come in and decorate the studio, he would do a fantastic job. I actually know two people like that. There's him, Paul Flowers, and a guy called Lee. Now, that's the guy who's running the place in uh, Birmingham. Both of them fantastically artistic with what they do. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm still coughing here, aren't I? It's, it's, it's not hurting at all. It's just a bit phlegmy. I, and the button... The button to, to cut the cough off is right behind me and it's an awkward place to get to. I've, I've kind of come forward a bit. I'm sitting a bit too far forward to get to it. Um, and I, I, I don't know, maybe I should get them in to decorate the studio next door ready for me. And they, they do all this stuff behind and it, it would just look fantastic because they've done up stages and all this. And whenever they do stuff, it's, I mean, it's really good, really good what they do. Anyway, so Paul does other things as well. Uh, he does websites and he also makes the most fantastic cakes. And I remember years ago, I think it was for my 32nd birthday when I was working at the pub in Camden Town. And he made this birthday cake for me. It was fantastic. You have never seen so much cream and chocolate on a cake. It was fantastic. And I knew he'd made this other cake. Um, what he'd done, the dangerous part was, in the middle of the cake, there were no candles, he'd put a blooming firework in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of this cake, dear. And it was going... It wasn't, wasn't one of those that go bang and goes up. It was just one of those that... that like that, shh, like almost like a like a very small fountain, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't going all over the place. It was very, very small, and it, this thing was firing up there. And of course, they sung "Happy Birthday" and they're trying to blow this thing out, and it wasn't wasn't going to go out until it had finished firing, was it? <clears throat> so we had that, uh, and all the time this is happening, I'm thinking, oh, I wish you'd get on and finish singing the song. I want a bit of the cake. So after that, 
the cake is usually taken into the dressing room and then is unfortunately forgotten about. Well, not by me, dear. I never forget there's a cake outside. Absolutely not. I've just realised something. One minute. I was going to turn myself up then, but now I've started the show at this level. I better keep it going. <clears throat> I've got a, a thing in front of me there. It tells me how loud everything is, and it's not going up very high today. And I think you know, I, I realise what I've done now, but it's too late to do anything about it. Never mind. Um, so this cake is finished, and then it goes out the back there. And as always, they forget about it, and it's kind of left on a on a uh, like a cupboard uh, above the cupboard supposed to have been cut later on in the night or taken home by someone and the thing is it rarely is people then forget about the cake not me i always know there's a cake there and as soon as that cake gets outside right who's got a knife and oh you can't do that i said they won't even know go and get me a knife so tom who's a very good friend of mine uh he drives one of the drag acts around tom he goes and gets a knife and brings it in. We and as I cut into the cake, and he cuts a slice. And Tom's all right, you know. We won't get one of those tiny slices that you pay an arm and a leg from in a restaurant. You know what I mean, don't you? You know when you're going in a cafe or a restaurant, and they've got a, a piece of you know vanilla cheesecake or something like that, and you buy a slice, and they're always so small and mingy, aren't they? Tiny little bit of cake which they want to charge you four or five pounds for. And it's outrageous. Not Tom, he cuts a nice big chunk. And as he pulls it out, I suddenly realise that it's a fruitcake. I don't like fruitcake. It wasn't sponge and I was so disappointed. I'd been sitting there for at least half an hour watching this cake being paraded all over the stage, sitting in the uh, dressing room, and it was a fruit cake, and it, I, I just hate fruit cake with my... I, I, I'll eat... <clears throat> I w I'll have fruit cake if it's just a bit of fruit cake, you know, from, like, made like that. But when it's got the marzipan and the icing on, it just doesn't taste the same. And you probably say, well, why don't you take the icing and marzipan off? No, you see, the flavour starts going into the cake. You know it does, and it never tastes the same. And I was so, I, and I said to Tom, I said, oh, it's a fruit cake. He said, yeah, don't you like that? I said, no. I said, I am so disappointed. It wasn't one of those lovely, creamy sponge cakes. Oh, dear, well, that served me right, wasn't it? So no cake for Chris, I'm afraid. Very, very disappointed there. So please, boys and girls, if you're going to have a birthday and you're going to invite me, can you make it a sponge cake? You don't mind me asking, do you? Eh? <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, interestingly, um, after I visited my sister, and I meant to tell you this a couple of shows ago, I, as I always do, ate badly up there because she always... Gets out the chocolate biscuits and the crisps and pies and things like that. And I always I always feel very bad. That's why I only stay up there a few days at a time. The fruit and the veg go right down because I do eat a lot of fruit and veg at home, as you know. I'm not criticising the way people live, uh, but uh, she don't eat enough fruit and vegetables. In, in, in my in my honest opinion, in my in my. Um, uh, in my in my lonely opinion, I suppose, and I eat a lot of them here, um, so I do I do I do think I eat quite badly. She does lovely dinners. Don't get me wrong here, lovely dinners, but it's it, the bits in between. And it's very difficult. She's it's all in the cupboards, sweets and biscuits and things like that. And I'm sorry, yeah, it's just unless she puts locks on the cupboards doors, or hides everything away before I get there. You see, they go to bed usually quite early, about half past ten, eleven o'clock. <clears throat> and I generally stay up a couple of hours. Actually, it's not so bad now. I, I generally go to bed about one o'clock while I'm up there, twelve or one o'clock. But then I'm in the cupboards, you know, biscuits and crisps. And she's always got crisps. And she knows my favourite. She goes out, I'm sure she goes out just before I get there and starts buying everything that I like, but I won't have in the house here because I know I'll eat them. Anyway, so after a few days, what was it three days up there last time? And I came back here 
do you know what? I weighed my, I went to bed and I weighed myself the next morning. I was exactly the same weight as what I am when I'm here eating the other stuff. So <laughs> I, I just don't get that. Do you? So maybe I'm doing it right anyway. Maybe 13 stone is my correct weight. That's what it's hovering around, 13. It goes up to about 13.06 and down to about 12.13.0. Very strange. I think 13 stone must be my correct weight. Any more than that, and I start looking ill, you know, sucked in cheats. Cheeks, rather. On my face, that is. <laughs> Email address, chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk uh, is my email address. I oh, was just talking about the cats and the, the pet airways. I have found, <clears throat> I've been looking for it for a while, uh, my cat brush. I've been looking for it for ages. Um, the other cat, Tiny, who died in January, she had long fur. And certainly towards the, uh, not towards the end, for the last couple of years, I've had to brush her because her fur gets all matted up. And as they get older, they can't kind of, reach round anymore so i've been brushing her and uh i i couldn't i thought i'd give katie a brush uh, the other day because she's always licking herself katie always seems to have wet patches on herself where she is just constantly licking so i found this brush and i, I got katie and I, she stood in front of me and i brushed her they love it don't they cats love being brushed and she sits there she stands there on all fours right next to me Purring away, and I've got the brush, and they like it rough. Have you noticed that? You get that brush. I mean, you got you can't use for Christ's sake. Don't go in your cupboard and use a hairbrush because that's sharp. They have the ends of the brush have got like little, almost like ball bearings on the end, so you can brush the cat and it it doesn't stick into the uh, delicate skin. But you can push it right down. She loves it. She loves a hard brush, and a towel goes up. And you brush away. And then I did her tail as well. And I, I kind of held her tail. And I did the tail as well. She's quite happy standing there, meowing away while I'm brushing. And the amount of dead fur that comes out, especially if you haven't done it for a long time. This brush is full of dead fur. Do you brush your cats and dogs? They love it. And afterwards, stroke them. And it's all lovely and smooth. Oh, I had to give her a cuddle. Give her a little cuddle after that. Now, uh, let's do some uh, emails then. First of all, hello to Lisa. Hello, Lisa. How are you, my darling? Now, she's been watching the karaoke videos that we recently uh, made at Belushi's a couple of weeks ago. And Suko's, Suko's in that. If you haven't seen her, then the best way to do this, the best way to find it is to type into YouTube Belushi's Karaoke. B-E-L-U-S-H-I-S, -S, Belushi's Karaoke. And then you should see two videos come up, part one and part two. Suko, our, one of our regular correspondents, is at the beginning of part one, okay? Well, Lisa's been watching them, and she says, both videos were a lot of fun. Mel is the best singer of the two brun bunches. Yeah, she's quite good male, isn't she? I can't, I'm just trying to think what she sang now. Can't remember what she sang. She, she was in there with her, I think it was her husband or boyfriend. Um, she also says, sexy, bald dude, dude, in the second video is hot. Uh, that'd be Isidore. And he's from Iceland. Uh, that was Isidore from Iceland. And get this, the girl who sung... The Icelandic entry on the Eurovision Song Contest is his niece. I think it was his niece or was it his cousin? Oh, I can't remember now, but it's, it, he, she is a member of his family. How fantastic is that? And we like the Icelandic song. She says he's got a nice voice too and is hot. Thanks so much for sharing uh, the videos with us, Chris. It was almost like being there in person. I'm glad you thought so. I was hoping Suko would get her hubby and daughter to join in to sing a song too. Maybe next time she comes for a visit with her family, you can talk them into doing it. Ah, well, the problem there is um, her daughter Jade wasn't old enough to come in the pub, unfortunately. So what happened? Jade 
and uh, Jerry, Suko's husband, they went to see the musical Les Miserables while, while Suko was doing the karaoke. All right. Uh, Lisa also goes, and I have to get this bit in here. It, she says, you awesome UK DJ hunk, you. <laughs> Why is it always the people that you don't fancy think you're a hunk and those that you do fancy think you're a bit of a minger? What's all that about? I don't get it, Lisa. Thank you, darling. Jason in London, he's in Camden Town in London, was recently uh, listening to the show about post office television, uh, post office uh, saving stamps. And Jason says, I've still got my, oh dear, <clears throat> my, the voice is going, isn't it? Jason says, I've still got my auntie's post office TV stamps. Do you think I can cash them in? Well, you might as well try, dear. And it doesn't matter if they're for a small amount. You know, money's money. That's it. Surely they will credit you for those post office television stamps. Eh? Come on, Jason. Go and try it. Take them in. See what they say. Don't let them keep it. Now, we've got a bit serious now, I'm afraid, boys and girls. The elf stories... Continue to go on. You remember Maureen did upset the elves a little while ago by suggesting that she wanted one as a pet. And I did have to come down on her like a ton of bricks, I'm afraid. Telling her that elves are not pets, they are small people and are not to be trapped as slaves. Maureen has apologised since and we are waiting to hear whether she has been forgiven yet. It all has to go through the correct channels, Maureen. Maureen in Spain. Robert from Iceland writes, Dear Chris and friends of United Kingdom Talk, a Sunday morning, the sun is shining and it's all rather nice from this vantage point high up on the roof of the world. The music centre Oh, that's an old term, isn't it? Music centre. God. Yeah, when I was a when I was a child, that was what something that was that was one of your wants, wasn't it? You wanted a music centre. Uh, if you're young, you won't know what these are. A music centre was basically a, a record player, a cassette player, and a radio all in one unit. There were no CDs, dear, and none of these USB stick things, whatever they are. The music centre is playing my beloved Mozart. My coffee bowl is full and I feel a calmness that lifts the soul. I love Mozart for each and every time I listen to art painted in sound. It is to rediscover that I do have a soul. Oh, the phone's going. Just a minute. Hello. I am recording my transmission. I am not changing the times, dear. I'm just a bit late today. It's James Dean from the matinee show dot co dot UK. <coughs> eh? Thank you very much. Would you want to talk today? Do you want to talk to me today? Actually, we're halfway for an email at the moment. Just a minute. Just a, I'm going to have to plug something in here. Oh, what's the time? It's 22. Oh, dear. Hang on. We've only got another 20 minutes. Just a minute. I've got to plug something in to get me to do this. Um, right. oh, oh, God's sake. Right, just a minute now. Just a minute, just a minute. Push, push that button there. <clears throat> now, I don't know if he's going to be able to hear us. One second. Is that work? Right? Oh, no, no, just a minute. Uh, where are you? Are you there? I, I can very faintly hear you. Can you only hear me faintly? Very faintly, which oh, is always a good thing. I've got to turn something up. One minute. Um, um, is it that one? Oh, you're sounding a bit clearer. Oh, is it that one? Is it that? Um, oh, you've not changed much there. Oh, um, uh, oh. is it that one? Uh, you're sounding about the same. <laughs> oh, whistle there. 
It's that one, isn't it? It is, yeah. Aha! Hello, James Dean! Hello, Chris Reardon, oh, how are you? James Dean, for what is that programme you do? It's nice on a Sunday, it goes out. Um, and what, and what is podcasts the... are available every week. What is the website for that? It's matineeshow.co.uk. How lovely to hear your vile voice, dear. I'm the same to you, dear. And um, I'm sure... So, Suko, have you heard from Suko? I've got a quick... Me- I had a little message from her this morning saying... Oh, let me, do, let me read the email. Just a minute. <clears throat> I'll just look this up. Um, I've got a bit of a... I had a bit of a chest uh, yesterday and the day before. Right. That, that appears to have gone. Oh, so it's not swine flu, then? Well, you don't know. It could have been... It could. It's difficult to know, and I'll tell you why it's difficult to know. Because at one end of the spectrum, and it's very sad, people are dying. That's right. Only a handful, but nevertheless, people have have died from it. Uh, And at the other end of the spectrum, I've heard stories of people going into the doctors who say, yes, you've got swine flu, here's some some, uh, Tamiflu. And they're like, well, is this it? You know, a runny nose and a sore throat. And the doctor says, well, in your case, yes. Well, yes, that's true. I actually know two people that have had swine flu and, and they've all had very mi- mild conditions. Have they continued to work through it? Uh, no, they've not continued to work because the uh, the danger is, of course, that you pass it on to somebody that isn't as able oh, to deal yes, with it. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It might well have been. I do know for a fact that on Monday night I had several people in uh, at Belushi's who had been in contact with someone, one of the other regulars, who was missing on Monday. And I'm like, well, where, where's, where's Scott today? And he said, oh, he was in here last night and he went home early. He had really bad pains in his back and um, was sneezing and coughing like anything. Apparently went to the doctors and said he had swine flu. Oh, so they've been in contact. So possibly that was passed on from them to me. And this is like five days later. So that would be about right, wouldn't it? Mm. And it's, it's possible, of course, that you've only got a small dose of it, um, you know, sort of secondarily passed on. I don't know about these things. We are not medical doctor dicticians, are we? Di- what di- <laughs> what di- doc- doc- di- What did I say there? Docticians. Do you mean a physician? Oh, that's it, physicians, well done. <laughs> it's so useful to have you sitting there sometimes. You haven't been well, have you? I've not, sir. I've got a broken rib. Oh, what a shame. What happened? Did someone hate your show so much that they punched you in the stomach? I'm not surprised, to be honest, dear. No, well, what it is, because I've been staying at your house a bit more regularly than in the past, and because you don't feed me when I'm there, and I, I starve away, my ribs did you have say, become well, brittle. Did you, did you say feed? Feed, yes. Sorry, feed, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, that's how it is. I don't know what's going to happen next time, because we are now converting that room to a proper little television studio, dear. Well, you know, it'll be like Big Brother. There'll be cameras there and everything. <laughs> My sister reckons I should get rid of the bed and get a sofa bed in there, and that would sort out the problem. At the moment, the bed is now up against the wall, so it's quite easy to just unfold it and put it down. Yes. But, um... Or, or maybe, maybe you could get one of those fold-up beds that you have in your hard-to-let apartments that you let out. You know, Hard-to-let these... hard apartments? What, what, what is, you, is it you call them? Studio apartments, whereas Stud- you need bed a Studio? They're not studio <laughs> apartments. They're one-bedroom <laughs> flats and houses. <laughs> I don't own any studio apartments. Here, I was listening to the Ross Pat Zelt podcast the other day, rosspatzelt.co.uk, and he was talking to Yannick from Germany. Right. Another regular listener to the show. And they had the they were actually discussing my flats. How cheeky. Disgraceful. What a liberty. Have they actually been to any of your flats? No, they haven't. So, so how dare they it's discuss a bit, them? Well, it's a bit much, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, James, do you have elves in Manchester? Um, only the, the remnants from, from Iceland, of course, the ones that uh, migrated oh, down Oh, yes, here. because... Yeah, I don't know if you've heard the show recently. Uh, did you hear the rather disturbing email from Maureen in Spain? No, I, I didn't hear from Maureen in Spain. The last, last thing I heard about elves was where Suko was mass exterminating the colony in her, in her sofa. Oh, that's a while ago now, isn't it, that one? I think that's quite a long time. Because Suko has written here, she wrote, um, talk, she's, she's only up to 1,227,459 of the 2 million How Marys you ordered me as penance for giving the uh, Icelandic elves up. 
Two million Hail Marys for her, dear. You don't even know what a Hail Mary is, do you? I do, yeah. Oh, you're a savage. You really are, James Dean, dear. (laughs) I'm going to have to take you down to church with me one Sunday. I'll take you to a full Catholic Latin Mass. Um, Bring sandwiches. They're about two hours long, dear. I was going to say, if if you go to a full Latin Mass, will you actually stay for the whole whole thing this time? (laughs) Oh, don't. I I know. Oh, it was hard going, that was. That was hard going. Anyway, um... Yes, Maureen in Spain was under the impression that you could have an elf as a pet. Right. And I was shocked and horrified for this. I mean, it's slavery all over again, dear. It is. I thought that had been abolished. Exactly. So, so I mean, we're, we're, we're in the throes of that. And I've got this letter here from, of course, the, the head. I, I call him that. I think, I've got a feeling Robert in Iceland is actually the head elf disguised as a human. Possibly, yes. He might be on some some sort of contraption, so he's sort of like human height. Yeah. Well, I have a statement here from him. Elves. Statement by the section chief, the American Association of Elves. Augustus Leftbridge Stewart Saggy Pants. Subject. Concerns raising on the trading in elves. It has come to my knowledge that people have expressed a desire to acquire an elf for the use of such matters as housework and other matters has defined within the boundaries of domestic work. Elves and other such beings who can trace their origins as being from folklore are covered under the United Nations Charter Section 10, Subsection 8. Don't suppose you've got the book there, have you? Uh, not, not to hand, no. no it's it's on the bookcase. Know. This goes on to state that all matters concerning the nature as defined as elf law being are the exclusive rights of his highness, the king of the elves, Robert the Viking. I knew it. I knew it. King of the elves. However, elves whose domain is within the United States of America are deemed to be subject to a subset of rules pursuant to those granted upon said Declaration of Independence and are therefore the subject to laws of the founding father of elves. The office of the section chief, Lower Manhattan, New York City, New York State, has agreed to come under the protection of Suko. This recognises her work done in the furtherance of forging strong relationships between the states of Iceland and the United States of America. Now, I've got a feeling there's something going on here with Iceland and America, and Iceland is clearly trying to undermine the United Kingdom's position of a special relationship. Mm. As sorted out many years ago by the great, great Margaret Thatcher. The lady is not for turning. That was a remarkably good impression. Thank you. I think I might have elves here, actually. How do you know? Well, I've been putting out... uh, We had a hedgehog in the garden, so I put out um, uh, some water for it, because you're not supposed to give them milk, apparently. Oh, really? No, so I, I put some water out for it. Uh, and some little bits of food, and it was gone. But I also noticed that my slugs, because I don't like using those oh. slug pellets, you, you yeah, evil they love it. killing the slugs, yeah. um, I noticed that there were a couple of slugs that were sort of tied down with little tiny ropes. Tied down? Yeah. So I Oh, think, I don't think we want to go there, dear. <laughs> so I think the elves are trying to, uh, trying to help me for feeding them. Sadomasochistic snails. Yes. I'm yeah. very concerned about that. I don't want any of snail mucky videos coming towards me, dear. Oh, snail I don't want any of that everywhere. stuff, love. It's bad enough observing them occasionally when I'm coming home from work along the pathway. Although, I have to say, not outside my house, not this year. I've got them all. Isn't it a horrible thing, though, when you're walking down the oh, path in the dark and crunch. you hear that crunch? Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. My, um... My, I uh, hope when you get rid of uh, your shed that you're going to have a full survey done to make sure there are no elves in residence. I never thought of that. You could be destroying their natural habitat. Do elves get on with cats? I don't know. don't know. Maybe they ride them like fleas. <laughs> <laughs> they use them for transport for getting around the world. 
<laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if you got up one morning or one night and you looked out the window and there was an elf riding around on socks, your cat. I love it! Yes, or one riding around on yes, Katie. Yes, yes! With, with Katie waddling around because oh, she's, okay. she's getting a bit lost. Oi, oi, don't you be calling my cat fat. <laughs> you want to have a look at your own bum? I, I'll just tell your listeners that when I was round at your place, um, a certain cat that, well, she'll remain nameless, was trying to get out of the cat flap and was having a bit of a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love them, don't we? Are you, uh, it's a shame you didn't hear the beginning of the show. Uh, well, you will hear well, you will when you listen to it, um, because I found this company called Pet Airways. Right. Uh, so I did a big... I can't do it again now. We haven't got enough time. But have a look at that online, all right? Petairways.com. I certainly will. When you've gone. Just a bit more of this email. It says, It should be noted that special status now exists between Reardon Town and its head state, Sir Chris Reardon, head of state. Reardon Town will now have a special guard of Swiss elves to guard the Eternal Palace in Bracknell. This concludes a statement. Robis Lewis Pellis. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how you're head of state of uh, Reardon Town? Are you, are you like a benevolent dictator? or uh, Because you, you haven't been elected there, have you? A benevolent dictator? I don't know. No, I don't need to be elected because I know people want me in charge. <laughs> So much better than our, um, uh, 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 the, the, the leaders of this world and country. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never met the mayor. We have a mayor in Bracknell, you know. You do, yeah. We do have a mayor in Bracknell, and you can all often see his fat little face sitting there in a copy of the Bracknell News. Yes. In, with, in with fact, somebody, um, when, his... I, when I was down at West End Live, we met the mayor of Westminster. Oh, yes. Um, which reminds me, it's pronounced Westminster, not Westminster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And um, somebody said, uh, so are you a pearly king to him? They didn't realise he was the mayor. <laughs> well, you know, the ma- one of the mayors in London, I think it might be Lambeth, he's on our bus. Oh, right. He's on our bus and he turns up to all the events and it's shocking the way some of these people behave. It really is. He's the only one who's there in a suit. <laughs> Did you not meet your local mayor when you went down to that local event in Bracknell? What was that? Oh, no, I only stayed a while. There were too many fit lads walking around with no tops on. It was too much for me, dear. Oh, you poor thing. It was far too... I had to leave. That was the uh, Bracknell big day out. Mm. I walked through there. There's all these lads uh, in their early 30s, late 20s, early 30s, walking around with no tops on. And in the end, I could... I could oh, I, could, I, could, I came over all... I had a hot flush and I had to leave very quickly. Oh. Well, you, you might be getting a visit from me uh, in the near future. Oh, am I... Yes. Again. <laughs> um, because, of course, Dreamboats and Petticoats have to get the... Uh, oh, we're going the, to see that, aren't we? We are. Well, it opens in the West End uh, very shortly. In fact, it's probably just about opened when this one goes out to air. OK. Can you uh, do it? What, what, what day would that be? Do you know? Um, well, it opens on the Wednesday before the press night, and I only know the press night date, which is the 27th, so it'll be the 22nd, I think it is. 22nd of July? 22nd of July, the previews start at the Savoy Theatre, and then the following Monday is when they do the big official launch, the press launch, um, and it's there for a couple of months. Can we do a Tuesday or Wednesday? That, that could always be possible. It could if you saw be possible. it, do you need any money for that? Uh, well, you know, if you're offering, I, I never say no to uh, Chris right. Reardon opening his wallet. Well, if you order the tickets, I'll add, do you have to, how, to, how does one pay for these? You can pay at the theatre, can you, or what? Pay for tickets? Hey. Pay to go to the theatre? Yeah. Well, how, do, how does that work, then? Oh, I, I forgot, of course, you're, you're just uh, not as celebrity as me. Oh, I, I just get paid, on with it, will you? I haven't paid to go to the theatre in years. Oh, it's all free, is it? No, we, we, we probably won't have to pay, Mr. Oh, Lee. how marvellous. But for Christ's sake, don't get me a seat with no seat leg. Can you get us at the front of the stalls? Uh, that, that would always be possible, yes. That's, where, that's my favourite position. I know some people, they like to sit further back, mm. but I don't have a problem moving my head around. When I went to see The Lion King with uh, Suko, who was right at the front, and um, I, I was talking on the last show about Priscilla, which I went to see um, a, a, a week or so ago now. And whereas the show was out of this world, the seat, the the, the seat was awful. We could see everything, but it was just so uncomfortable. Have I spoken to you since? You, you have spoken to me, but not not on air. Personally, I think the best seats in the theatre are the um, 
uh, sort of centre aisle seats. Right. Uh, about sort of six or seven rows back from the front. Ah, right, OK. I, I like to be right at the front, if that's possible. You know, I'm going next week or in the next couple of days to see Harry Potter, the new film of that one. Oh, of course, Mud Mary's my co-presenter, has now seen that. Oh, I haven't seen it yet, so don't tell me. The only thing is I'm having trouble finding someone to go with. Oh, you I, poor oh, thing. Oh, God, I'm going to be with that sad old man turns up with his banana sandwiches and flask of tea to sit there and watch a film. Well, may- maybe you could go to the premier seats at the O2 Odeon or, or wherever it was Ah, called. the premier seats. Well, that was at the... Um, no, that was at the Odeon. Yes, it is very near the O2, but it's, I think it's in Greenwich. The only thing is that is quite a way from... On me, mm. uh, that's a that's a good hour and a quarter, maybe hour and a half drive. But, but it is a long film, so you want to be comfortable. Oh, well, like Star Trek was a long film, wasn't it? It was. Did you ever see that yet? Yes, you took me to see it. Oh, of course I did. Silly and, me. Uh, and, uh, and yeah. uh, <laughs> well, when we were there, of course, it wasn't too bad not having any leg room because you just put your feet up across all the seats. Shh. Uh, sh- <laughs> well, I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you, James Dean. I'm nearly out of time. You're welcome, Mr. You're you're going into my goodbye section now. Well, enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks for ringing. You're welcome. Bye-bye. There we are. James Dean. It's nice to have someone suddenly appear on the phone like that, isn't it, eh? Very nice indeed. And uh, I am out of time now, which means I haven't got to Maureen's letter. Uh, which I do on the next show. Sorry, Maureen. Oh, you're waiting a little while to get your letters coming up here. What was she going on about? She's Apparently she's planning to have a holiday here in the UK in a September, October, but they can only manage to come for a few days. A few days is better than nothing, Maureen. All right. Don't forget the email address of the show if you want to join in at any time is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk thanks very much for watching and listening to the show today i'll see you on the next one bye bye now